Thank you all for joining. Um, a very, very distinguished and esteemed panel I have before me. Um, my name is Angus Kidd. I'm uh, an advisory board member with Dynamo. I've been with Dynamo for about a year. Uh, I'm the industry lead for the service delivery center cluster because we have about 100,000 people in the Northeast working across service delivery centers of various types. Um, my background is I worked for 25 years overseas for a bank called Credit Suisse, uh, most recently in Poland for the last four years where I ran their 5,000 person delivery center providing services to London and Zurich offices. Um, today, it gives me great pleasure to introduce um, the following. Um, let me just make sure I have my notes correct. So, so Tracy Moore, Executive Director of PE Group, who's been promoting a positive social and economic change by supporting entrepreneurship and enterprise for over 40 years. And I'll let right. Tracy talk a bit more in, in a few seconds. Not me personally, I must have for 40 years. <laughs> just saying. So, <laughs> that, it sounds good, I go with it. Um, Charlotte Winderbank, uh, co founder and managing director of FIRST. Uh, who are lean, a learning and development agency for entrepreneurial skills in the UK and beyond. I, I think that sounds like an excellent organization. Um, and last but not least, uh, Lucy Batley, uh, co-founder and creative director of Jump, which is a digital design agency based right here in Newcastle. So again, I'm very, very interested to hear how Lucy uh, chairs this, this interesting panel. Um, very briefly, I think the intention of this session is to really give an opportunity to share the various experiences of collaboration uh, and just reflect on the advantages, but also disadvantages of how you can collaborate um, potentially with competitors uh, in the marketplace. With that all being said, Lucy, I hand over the reins to your good self and uh, have a good session. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Angus. Um, welcome, everyone. This session is called Collaborating with Competitors, and we're going to look at a warts and all, exciting, um, experience, the experiences. Um, and I've said very specifically that I wanted to be warts and all in terms of what it's like to collaborate um, with a competitor, which is a bit unusual. It was it all um, singing roses or will you never darken each other's doors ever again? That's what you need to get today. So um, just a bit of housekeeping. We're going to do about 30 minutes of chat and then 10, 15 minutes of Q&A. And I've been told if you would like your um, name to be shouted out when we read out the questions, can you put your name and job title or company in the text when you put it on the chat. So um, to kick off, um, basically your backstory in terms of how you met and how you developed the relationship um, is almost synonymous with the film Gladiator in the terms of you became, you were the client who became the customer, who became the competitor, who became the collaborator. So <laughs> Charlotte, can you kick off and tell us how you met each other originally and how that relationship developed to the point where you've just done a very successful project together. Yes, certainly. So um, I was first introduced to PE as a startup, um, young and naive coming into the world of business. And uh, they very much helped me and supported me with my um, ideas and passion and actually grounded it into a business model. And uh, yeah, from that point onwards, we'd always had a, um, we always knew each other and, and had a good uh, relationship and um, what I'm going to talk about the kind of process of what we went through before we started the project and then I think we can talk about more about like how it happened and what were the challenges and etc so um in terms of like the process that, that I followed it was very much around knowing exactly who PNE were um who their customers were what value they provided for their customers and what's the skill sets and experience they had as an organization. Now for us, we're, we're only six years old and uh, p and &E have been have been going for 40 years. So already, whilst we still operate in the same sector and we still do the same work, there is that difference in, in, in that skills and experience based just on, on the age thing. We then, um, so, so that was, so that was kind of the first bit. And then um, for me, it was very much around the personal relationships that I had with people within the organization. Uh, so Billy and I are particularly good friends. And, you know, we have seen each other um, out, outside of work and we know how we kind of operate and what our, our values and passions are um, outside of work. We also, um, before we 
committed to this project together. We also um, worked on a similar project. So we run something called the If We Can, You Can Challenge, which is a startup business competition. It is now going to be called the Startup Awards Northeast. And we they come on board as partners with us. So they're not as they're not like we, we don't work on the project together. They just come on board with it to support us. So we kind of had an idea of the understanding of how they would well, before committing to a full project together, which I think was really important. So just, just you, well. you had quite a long relationship with p &A before you actually started working together, which is interesting. Okay. Would, to know, say, in that process, yeah. you got to know each other well. I would say it was with different members of p &E as well, wasn't it? So you saw different people in different um, kind of areas of the organisation and worked differently in different ways with them. So we had a good knowledge. Yeah, absolutely. And then um, what I noticed was as FIRST was growing, we started um, tendering for the same projects um, and it would be like we would win one then you guys would win one. And it was just that kind of almost like that back and forth. And I think that was really important as well. Like when we when we didn't win a tender, like finding out who did and, and, and for myself asking why, like in my head, obviously I didn't ask the clients why, why not? Can I ask? <laughs> so how did you feel but like just, when, when you saw that PA yeah, yeah. had won, how did that make you feel? Absolutely devastated and wanted to be very yeah, I was super pissed off. I was like, oh, like obviously, <laughs> like you. But that's you know, that's yes, yeah. <laughs> that. I don't think it was necessarily that P and E won it. It was the fact mm. that we didn't win it. Um, and you know, you you always like whenever you don't you get a no in business. I think you always just get you kind of internalize it. And think right, well, what did we yeah, do? Yeah. What did we do wrong? Like what you know, that kind of thing. And I think that happens in any sector. Um, so this kept so this kept happening a couple of times, and then I was in the pub and I saw Billy, and I was just like, "Look, why are we, why are we separating? Why don't we try and do something together to make it stronger, to make it better, um, and let's just see what where it takes us?" And she did that kind of look like, "Hmm," kind of thing, and I didn't hear anything from her for a couple of weeks, and then next thing I know. We were we were having a round table discussion, so, like just sharing ideas. That was and a bold move from your point of view. So let's hear about Tracy when Billy came back to the office and said this um I was gonna say lunatic in the pub, Charlotte Wendy Bank is asking mm -hmm. together. Um <laughs> what was your first reaction to that? Interested, but I've learned over the years that when collaborations kind of appear and opportunities appear, not to jump in. So it was a kind of, oh, that's interesting. Let me reflect on it. Um, let's explore it further and just kind of take it slowly. I think we both needed to understand the direction we're coming from and what we could bring and what the opportunities were and whether there were any opportunities at the first stage that we, we kind of sat around a table and said, well, is there anything we can do? We didn't know whether there was, there was anything, but actually we quickly realised that our strengths actually, came, we described ourselves as a Venn diagram. So actually, first, we've got some really core strengths around working in education with young people, p &E with the established sort of startup and business and helping businesses develop and grow. And in the middle, there's some overlap, but actually put it all together and we had a fantastic opportunity to do something really big. Which is what I, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer that two heads are better than one. I'm a, firm, I'm a really strong believer in collab collaboration, and that's the way we work internally. So, yes, the, so you both spotted an opportunity, which is fantastic. And then what was the next step to start to work together on the uh, going, for, going for Green project? Is that what it was called? Green for Goal. Green for oh, Goal. right. <laughs> Nearly right, yeah. <laughs> That's interesting, actually, because it, it it bounced, didn't it, Charlotte? I think it started as one name and then turned into something else as the team got a hold of it. But but yeah, um, I've got to be honest, I don't know if I've ever said this to you, Charlotte, but the first stage for us in terms of that kind of having a conversation and exploring it was to do with the due diligence. But you did make reference to it earlier. <laughs> but that's a policy that we have. So we did our due diligence and then, yeah, and then met up. You looked under you the hood of the information bit. to be fair, most of it <laughs> access to it. So <laughs> it was all above board. <laughs> so, <But> yeah. <laughs> uh, so you, you basically took this gamble and decided to do the project together. Um, so very, very briefly, can you just tell us what the project was and um, how long that how long that lasted for? 
Yes, yeah, so it was a it was a year long project, and it was essentially developing entrepreneurial skills for level two learners across four colleges, and with a theme of sustainable sustainability. Um, so obviously, Peony have uh, sustainability as one of their core expertise when doing any kind of business advice that we, you know, whilst we can engage and encourage young people to to get involved with it. Um, we, we had none of that kind of like that background and that knowledge and that research that goes hand in hand with with creating sustainable businesses. Um, and then what was interesting as well, we whilst we, we then fleshed out the project detail, it was clear what the different skill sets were around the table and what was brought in. So we had asked first staff that were, you know, the youth engagement kind of stuff. And then we had the research and the marketing and the monitoring and 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 that kind of really like professionalism from from P and E. And it so if that hadn't have happened at that point, and there wasn't that clear uh, set of skills that were different, that would have then started giving me alarm bells because if then someone was then trying to do the same thing as as what the other staff member could do then I could think there would be a bit of conflict. Um, and for us, that was, it was almost like that validation of actually, yeah, we are experts so, in this so little bit. Did you and we're not, sit down and say, you do this and I do that? And did you have some sort of formal agreement between you? Did you have a, some sort of prenup? If we, we did talk about, I get the kids. We did eventually, but at the start, I think it was all just about ideas generation. But I think that very first meeting where we sat down and discussed was when um, somebody said about being passionate for a, for, for a pitch that you're giving. And actually, we developed a pitch together, didn't we? And we were, all, we were throwing bits in and it got really exciting. So I kind of went into that first meeting thinking, all oh, right, OK, there might be some potential and came out thinking we've got to do this. We've got to do this. There's opportunities. And we shared our knowledge of the market and what the challenges were and how we could overcome them and and it just seemed to fit it just fit really well but yes we did have that we called it a prenup arrangement and we've also referenced the 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 parent and child uh thing a few times because it's it, p and &E almost feels like an older organization and first as a younger organization yeah. so just um, p and &E is 40 years old um first a six-year-old so yeah we've had conversations about was it like a parent-child relationship in terms of yeah. you, you were accessing your knowledge and expertise and then you've got these wild <laughs> wild youngsters from first running <laughs> and crazy. but you hear criticisms in business all the time we say businesses as they start to kind of develop and grow and become structured they're less innovative and they're less sort of jump at opportunities and I didn't see like us like that at all but actually that blast of energy that came from first made me think oh you know we need we need to build this again so it was really yeah it was, it was a good experience so just going back, we talked about you going back to the prenup because I think this is quite an important point um, you've called it a relationship charter mm. so you, you developed the relationship you had the idea you started working together and then did you did, did you develop that and sign that before the actual project began? Okay, yeah. just talk about that, because I think that's really yeah. important for people who are watching in terms of how to make sure you... signed it in blood, didn't yeah. Charlotte? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, a, it was almost like a, a what-if document. So what if this scales? What if we start, you know, uh, selling it to other college providers like what happens if other stakeholders are interested it was very much around that growth piece because we definitely had the intention like once we've done the pilot to make this bigger and better and more accessible to young people because the impact it had was incredible so before even all of that happened we made sure we understood whose IP it was what kind of profit share it was um and and all this kind of um you know we had very, what very distinct roles and responsibilities as well, didn't we? So, so p and &E were responsible for the delivery of the sustainability and the monitoring and, and first we're doing all of the engagement. And, but we were working together. We did, but we had leads on each area of the project and, and outlining that from the start was really useful. I think it's really, I think it's brilliant that you had something in writing. Yeah. My my brother's a solicitor and he always says it's very difficult to argue about a telephone conversation you had six months ago. But if you've got something documented, then it's and it's particularly if you both agreed to it, it's almost like your manifesto piece, isn't it? 
So let's move on to yeah. the nitty gritty. You started working together, so I want to I, I want to do the warts and all. So both of you, if I, if you take it in terms of Charlotte first, what was your kind of positives or negatives from the project? What what did you learn from it? Well, from a um, an operational perspective, it very much um, improved our monitoring and reporting um, because PE as well do a lot of funded monitoring reporting for other people that have grants so we were able to access that kind of expertise it was um, a validation of what area and niche expertise that we provide as a service because it was clear that we had skill sets that PE me could learn from as well and that was an excellent little kind of actually yeah no we we do know what we're on about <laughs> um the um the fact that now it can be scaled and we have a package and we have a, a sales plan to um to take this further um the skill swap between the staff i've said that before in terms of motivation for the staff as well um from a from a, a first perspective they absolutely do, love do, working with experience project partners because you were working with a organization do you think your staff kind of were like oh this is we're, we're, we're more professional now we need to behave more professionally yeah it was an accountability thing as well like because they weren't just accountable to first it was accountable to to p e as well and that reporting side of thing we use monday.com as our collaborative um like online digital board because I, and without that, and did you I think share that between the two organisations? Well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah, we it, the, in terms of if we hadn't have had that, then it would have probably a lot of it. There could have been a lot of conflicts and challenges, but because it was all recorded in one space and it wasn't fifty emails, you know, flying about mm. uh, where where information gets missed, it meant that we could contribute without having like so a more formal the, meeting. Where technology has actually assisted the project. That's brilliant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, in terms of yeah challenges, I don't know if you want to go uh, first, well, Tracy. Can I do I do you want to stay positive. <laughs> <laughs> but I absolutely agree because um, I think working collaboratively does make you more focused and certainly our team, what I loved about the project was that because I want everybody that, that works for PNE to come into work really excited every day and look forward to their day and this project enabled them to do that because they loved working with the team, it was something different and I think yes there was an element of um, you don't want to let anybody down so you know you, you push yourself all of the time. Um, so yeah it was it, it, the creativity um, that came through both teams, but just bouncing ideas off each other and sharing um, the fact that we had additional resources and access to um, kind of other networks and things just helped really build the project into something special. So, so that made a difference. Um, in terms of negatives, I do think sometimes it's a bit of a personal one, but I am, uh, I like to be in control. And I think thinking about, well, what were the negatives was when um, I would come back from the project and then come back in it and turned into something different than what I had expected. Um, as a caveat, it was always better than what I expected, but 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 it's that kind of that, oh, right, okay, we're doing that now, are we? Um, and I think- You've almost got a double control thing then, haven't you? Because you've got to control your own team within your own organization. And then you've got this other team that's coming in that you don't know and you've not worked with before. So it, kind of got a but that's kind of well, sorry Lucy, that's that's kind of where the ground rules comes in and that kind yeah. of prenup arrangement because it wasn't just charlotte and i that agreed that the whole team board right, okay. that everybody understood where, where the boundaries were what the expectations were and and what we were going to do so um and, and they know now how we're going to take it forward or what what the op opportunities are to take it forward so everybody kind of bought into the whole culture of that that relationship um, so, so yeah, that, that was a negative and loss of front and centre because PNE typically leads projects, and we so we're used to being first and in, in, in driving things forward. To actually take a seat back, sometimes you've got it, it's difficult, but actually it, it worked really, really well, and I'm so pleased that we did. So that, again, that's probably me personally. Um, so. Thank you for being very generous in terms of her mud slinging. So can we have some dirt off Charlotte Windy Bank? Was were there any negatives? Were there any frustrations? I mean, obviously, when you get more people on a project, complex. then it becomes more complex. And you know, I think that 
there is that risk of information being lost and you know if you it's quite easy to lose sight of the project and I felt that for myself I think for me it's and it will always stay with me it's that paranoia of being a business owner you know you you that I don't think that will ever leave you because you always have that little ooh, you know and expand on that in terms of fear of failure no just like you just that little gosh we are handing over quite a lot of our like you know the way we do stuff and but then but but, but because they were doing that as well it made it really equal and it, it kind of quashed all my fears. It was so in, like, it was internal. There was nothing that PE were doing that was, it was alarming or anything like, oh, which it's gonna take everything you do and change it into our own stuff. There was absolutely nothing from their side. It was just my <laughs> inner paranoia. And it was only a little bit. It wasn't like it was, it, it stopped me um, enjoying the project or anything. It was just every so often I'd be like, oh. So I was like, do you know what? I trust them, I value them, I think they're mint, let's just go for it. And because of just that letting go. So it, it was again about control. It's it was just letting go. And and then, you know, and I think if I hadn't, then it would have it would have been a bit rubbish and and people would have you would have, you would be able you to and, see that. We've had sorry, you know. Trace, we've had that when we've collaborated with other companies. It is a massive fear that you know we've been in business for X number of years. We're going to give away all our um, trade secrets, and Tracy's going to steal them and go away. But I'm a firm <laughs> believer that the more open you are, the more that will kind of come back and be be a positive. Tracy, do you want to add to that? I was going to say I hope so because I am a communicator. I mean that that that's who I am and what I do. Um, overly so sometimes maybe I don't know. But I was going to say I think Charlotte and I are very similar in terms of our leadership style. So we both we we work together very closely at the pro with with the at the start of the project to set the parameters to set the expectations the objectives and to build all of that in and then we both took a step back and I, I don't know there was one particular instance that I remember at the start of the project Charlotte and I agreed that we were going to work with a particular sector and that we were going to focus the project on that sector and then I think it was about six weeks in um, there were some promotional materials that I was looking through and actually the sector had completely changed um, and, and and yet the team were able to describe exactly why that had happened and they kind of taken that decision, which was still within the format of the agreement. Um, but yes, I was a bit, oh, OK. And actually, it's just as well they did, because what they did was they, they worked with four sectors, I think, instead of just the one. Um, yeah, so so that's but but it is about letting them get on and, and, and everything was better than it would have been had I stuck my nose in. Was there a, did you agree that if there was a point where you couldn't agree on, for example, which sectors you were going to focus on, that if there was a stalemate situation or an impasse, who would have the final say on that? Did you did was that in your um, prenup agreement? I know you call it prenup, which is called the relationship charter, is much more official. In, ter in terms of the project, and this financial as well, um, there was a kind of it wasn't fifty fifty split. There was a partner that took most of the uh, kind of delivery and things and, and I guess um, when you're doing the delivery and you're leading the project it actually you're the primary um, kind of recipient of the grant if you like because it was a grant that we had um, then yeah I, I guess it would have it would have come down to to you Charlotte would it do you think that's fair yeah but then it's like where I don't it's difficult because it never happened at well, that is the point where we're both saying I'm saying yes and you're saying no like mm. like I don't I, when it's a creative project would you get I think you and I would have gone to the team wouldn't you wouldn't we we would have both had the same we would have sat down talked it through and then found out found a way forward together I think so this brings us nicely. Yeah. So we've, we've chatted before before this session. You said that you realised very quickly that it was a very good fit and that you had very similar values, very similar shared beliefs and shared behaviours, and that that works. What advice would you give to somebody who's thinking about um, collaborating and it's not a good fit? Would you advise them to just walk away from it? Or yeah, yeah. absolutely. So, Absolutely. Yeah, I've, I've been, well, p have been involved in collaborations in the past that haven't been as successful. And I think, you know, at the start, you know that, you know, this isn't quite right. You get that. And, and Charlie said, and I've just seen in the comments, gut feels always really yeah, important. This is absolutely, fully a gut. Um, 
Yeah. That, that, that's the best bit of business advice I've had in my career was trust your gut. Your gut, your gut is instinctive and it will tell you whether something's if something if something doesn't feel right, it generally it's not gonna be not gonna be good. Mm-hmm. And life life's too short to work with people that piss you off, excuse my French, but like if you can't imagine yourself having a, a soda or a beer with that person after hours and having a laugh, then what is the what is the point in spending time with them? Because that's what it's all about, isn't it? It's our time on this precious earth. I'm getting a bit deep, but if you don't, if you if you genuinely are looking to collaborate, find a company that you just think I can have a great time with them and I can learn loads of stuff from them. Otherwise, yeah, it, that sums up my feeling when I walked out the room that first first meeting it was like how exciting, yeah. And yeah, you just you know. that's a really tough one because we we've we've always you're always worried about your competitors and as we said, you are you're in competition with them and from in our industry we, we pitch against other companies in quite a lot. You know, and I, over the last couple of years because of the boards that I sit on, I've made a conscious effort to um befriend our competitors, not all of them, but do you, do you know what? It's been really kind of I'm not gonna use the enlightening because it's a bit naff, but I've been really, really pleasantly surprised how open people are to that relationship you know I, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer that there's enough work out there for everyone and that what's the point of hating people that are on the same turf as you it'd be you know it'd be better for the region if people are more collaborative and work together absolutely and we still compete Do against we? each other there'll still be <laughs> that we've but there's still tenders out there that we will both bid for and it doesn't stop us just because we've done this collaborative project together um it would just probably make both of our bids stronger and more competitive with each other actually though we have since we've put in a a tender together Mm. because we also recognize the strengths of working together and how sometimes you can achieve more together than you can just as an individual organisation, and 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 we scored really well, didn't we? After staying up all night, Charlotte, and, <laughs> and putting in that 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 bid, it was it was well scored. So I mean, there are opportunities that we'll be able to work together. But but yeah, business is business as well. There will be some competitive. Um, so just just going back to the parent child relationship, was there reverse mentoring? Was there peer to peer mentoring in terms of? Um, I'm assuming you've learned a lot from each other, but. Um, what, what else is that kind of learning from experience, but also bouncing off fresh ideas from a younger organisation? Can you elaborate a bit more on that? We joked as well that the, the original project was nine months long and it was almost the gestation period of having it having a baby. I've got to say, some of the fresh ideas came from the old organisation as well. Yeah. So it wasn't just, you know, it's the team within there. Um, so, so some of those really innovative ideas and fresh ideas did come from from the PNE team. I think it was just about working together, release that energy, and, and kind of people felt able to to open up and maybe see opportunities that they hadn't seen previously. Yeah, we because we share an idea. We'd share an idea and then um, that would that would be our idea based on our experience. And then then you guys would go, oh, and then we could do And this. then you would go, we could do this. <laughs> and then, and, but that, yeah, so it was that's like, the perfect, it was a point. For, the, for me, that's the perfect storm in terms of a, a very successful collaboration. You bounce off each other. And, you know, like I said before, two heads are better than one. So... You, you, you kind of you have this kind of energy that's going backwards and forwards between the two teams and eventually you come to something that's that's fantastic. I think honesty and openness is absolutely critical. So if there was something that wasn't happening the way we thought, I was able to pick the phone up and say, Charlotte, something's happened. You know, we've got a problem and we talk it through. We'd, we'd find a way forward and that was it. And, and I know that Charlotte did the same with us. We, we worked through stuff like that. But there was never an occasion that, somebody said there's a problem let's keep it to ourselves let's see if we can sort it out without involving the other party because we worked as a team so honesty and openness was absolutely crucial as well yeah oh yeah yeah like what i would love to see as well like if anyone else has got some experiences of collaborating with competitors like put it in the chat like i'd love to hear some great case studies some things that maybe haven't gone so well like what has everyone else learned from collaborating and if you haven't done it yet like well, what's what, would be, what would advice if you to sort of picking up on that what advice would you give people 
And if you could go back to the beginning of the project, what advice would you give yourselves? Just thinking, what actually do you really want out of this? Like, what what is the point? Can you? Because if you can do it yourself, then don't bother. But if there is a gap in your experience as an organisation where another um, organisation in your sector is doing that bit really well, then consider speaking to them. Also, as well, like it's so important to stick with your niche. Like if you come come to a pro collaborative project saying that you're going to do everything and 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 do all of it, then that is that isn't that's not going to work because that's controlling. And I think if you're as long as you're confident about the niche service that you can provide to a contract of work, then you, you can't go wrong. And I would say if you're thinking of collaborating, don't wait until an opportunity comes your way. Look around now and see who's out there, what they're doing, how they compare to your strengths, how their values match yours. Look at who you could potentially collaborate with, because if a tender comes out and it might be way, way more than you can do, but you know that there are a couple of organisations out there that together you could do something really fantastic, then already have those relationships already have that kind of those conversations up front um because it takes away a lot of the pain later and i think it's well like we've we've banned around the word collaboration so much and that's why i was so passionate about getting this this seminar um on the program because we banned it about but there's just not enough case studies around to show people how, how it's done and it doesn't matter across the sector like it, it it needs to be happening and it'd be mint if the northeast was a beacon of collaboration actually showing people how to do it like it's there are practice. also some very large opportunities that happen maybe in london and around that the northeast businesses if we came together and really pulled all of our strengths into one place we would be able to compete what on do you think what did that then what's the barrier to that fear that of losing control that you talked about before why do you think people are resilient or is not resilient resistant to, to collaboration it's probably bad experiences like if people have had experiences of people in their sector and you know it's just put them off thinking i would never collaborate with them because they're horrible human being <laughs> but then it's always about trust and honesty if it feels wrong it usually is shared objectives and shared reward build just build success inequality or either leads to disaster so i think that it, that's a really good point in terms of it it has to be a good fit from the outset otherwise it's going to just fall to bits basically and we weren't just delivering a project, we were making the North East a better place, weren't we? We were both working towards that much, much higher goal. Um, so anything else was just, just the detail and, and we really saw where we were going. So you, you, you said before that you've had some bad experiences in the past, Tracy. What kind of went wrong? with the, why, why were they bad relatively to this one? I think Melanie Brown's just <laughs> the eagles. <laughs> but, yeah, I love good that. timing. It's totally true. It's totally yeah, true. I think it is. Where, where, yeah, people. It's it's the opposite of everything we've discussed. Where people see this is my role. This is what I do, and you know you can't get involved with that. You can't tell me. And people have kind of very um, controlled areas. So it's almost like it's like separate separate organizations working together on something rather than, sorry working separately to achieve something rather than working together but we've had um you know dishonesty we've had we've had good collaborations as well don't get me wrong but we have had where um you know partners have told us one thing and actually the truth has been something very different and you go in with that element of trust at the start and by the time you realize that the information they've been giving you is not That's accurate good it causes a problem and also something I mentioned to Charlotte you, you also need to know that any organization that you're collaborating with has your um your level of uh, whether it's customer service quality that they present themselves in a similar way that you do because if you yes yeah yeah, yeah and I think that's what you alluded to earlier Charlotte when you said you know it's it's difficult to give over to another organization if they aren't doing things in the same way your minimum expectations really then it can cause problems the problem we've had in the past is that um it was it wasn't a level it wasn't a level playing field in terms of we were doing loads and loads of work and the, the collaborating partner was doing nothing or it perceived to be doing nothing and there was that imbalance between why should i be working 12 hours a day when they're sitting around watching netflix have you had experiences yeah. of that 
Yes, yes, we have. I, 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 I likened it to a university project that I once did where I think three people <laughs> like worked to get it in. Two people just sat and lived off the glory of the other. So, yeah, we, we have had uh, had experiences. Just different almost personalities come through in the organisation. You've got to work with people you know, share your values that are open, trustworthy and good communication. Where com If communication falls down, it's... Yeah, the Yes, we had it before where we were collaborating on a project and then uh, the CEO of that organisation that we were collaborating with pulled it at the last minute and it was just like, what, you know, because he didn't agree with um, some of the funding or something like that. And it was just like, that's why we were so cautious about this one and making sure we had that relationship charter, because I think you have to go through something like that to then put the um the, those kind of ground rules in place because it, honestly that piece of paper sold everything like, in terms Charter, of direction called it it's almost a manifesto um we're just we're gonna i'm gonna finish off with if anybody's got any questions can you post your questions on the chat line now put your name on if you want your name read out and um, so just to finish off what, what does the future hold is the project going to continue are you going to go global what, what's next that's the intention, isn't it, Charlotte? Well, look, we, we kind of, we met afterwards and discussed strategies for moving it forward and building it. The project is uh, with the education sector. Uh, so obviously, sort of at the moment, it's uh, it, it's a little bit different. Probably, but, yeah. but we have got plans um, and we just, I think we've been knocked off track a little bit. Would you think that's fair, Charlotte? But we'll pick it up again. But yeah, been a bit yeah. distracted at the moment, but... <laughs> But yeah, we're definitely going to pick it up. And uh, I think now more than ever, you know, sustainable and... Is it a continuation of what you've done together? Yes. So yeah, yeah. you it out as a bigger, bigger project. Green for Gold version two. Great. Using everything we've learned previously yeah. and making it bigger and better. Digital, we're on a digital conference. You have to call it 2.0 to be... Oh, sorry. <laughs> I, think, I think that is um, a really good testament to how brilliantly the project went together the fact that you're, you're going to continue it and it's been a success so you can take it on to um oh here we go Some, um, somebody's asked us please can you give examples of the charter and documentation bits and pieces that you said that you mentioned so can you go in a bit more detail about what was in the prenup the bread uh, the <laughs> relationship relationship charter yeah. Yeah, it was um, so it was themed around the what if and it was very much around, OK, the scalability of the project. So what would be the profit share if we sold this to an external provider um, whose IP belong to who? So, yes. So we basically had um, the IP around the young people, the young entrepreneurs and that kind of thing. Whereas Tracy and the team had her that had their IP around the sustainability um, themed around this so we provide we produced educational resources and then it was the agreement of like could we reuse the documents again and if so how how could we reuse them and if we did reuse them would that then mean um, a, a bit of profit going to either party and and, and, and that kind of thing. And was it legal? That's a good question. I've got, um, so someone on my advisory board is a lawyer and he looked over it and just said, it looks good, it looks fine from my perspective. So I well, think- Well, we, we both signed, signed, it. <laughs> signed it, Was there any, was there any um, provision that if, about what happens if it all goes horribly wrong? Who, who would take over? Would, was the one leading, was the one lead on it? Yeah, we didn't, I didn't think we covered any of the, I mean, we were responsible, we, because we had more of the funding, we were more responsible for the, I think we were classed as the project lead on it. So, so yeah, it was our responsibility to ensure it was, it all went right, yeah. Um, someone said, as well as bringing different specialisms and ideas, oh, it's gone, oh, it's gone. <laughs> um, well, in different specialisms and ideas you are at different stages and sizes of the organization so that's going back to the parent child thing what did you learn about working through differences i think it's it, it really it 
I mean, it's linking to the parent-child relationship. It, it was it was open and honest discussion. And, and I think, I don't know if we had any differences. We had, we each had in our area of responsibility, we had challenges. Yeah, and those challenges. Did you any arguments? Did you throw anything at each other? No. No. If you threw anything at me, I didn't notice. Sorry, Charlotte. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think we did. I think there were a couple, there were, as with every project, there were a few like, oh, moments, you know, where you say, right, we need to sort this out, what we're going to do. But I mean, I, I, I think, think I know we keep banging on about this, the chart of the prenup bit, but I think because you set out your stores from day one, that kind of eliminated the, the problem the potential problems because you you kind of all you you kind of pigeon time saves nine so to speak. And I think it probably it wasn't about us it wasn't about our organizations it was about the audience it was about the participants and we both had their best interests at heart so we wanted a project that really gave them a fantastic experience so that kind of helps shape your decision making as well doesn't it and helps you focus when there's an issue. Um, somebody's saying some examples of some projects, please. Don't know what that means in terms of future projects. Because you've worked on a very specific on the sustainability thing. Is there potential to do with different types of projects? Yeah, I mean, we what we want to do with this one specifically is take it and um, make it digital so that more providers can use the resources. And then, you know, when people people pay for it, we'll then do a profit share. Um, so that's kind of future projects. In terms of more examples of collaboration, I don't know if any else other people want to share some other examples of how it's worked. That would be awesome. I'm trying. I'm trying to think of some of ours. Um, you you said you could just a similar Tracy. You said we are here to create an, a universe, not not a star. Well, that, that's back about, yeah, it's about making, we both want to make the North East a better place. We might be doing it in different ways. We might be, you know, sort of um, focusing on different areas in terms of skills and learning and development and how we, we're supporting the economy. But, um, yeah, you achieve more. So rather than one organisation, you need a cluster of organisations that can really cover the whole the whole area. And that's, that's the purpose of collaboration, isn't it? Doing more with less. I, um, I love Billy, who works for BNE. &E. Group um, made a fantastic um, statement about how um, working with first felt like you were working for a higher purpose. You were, working, you were the greater good was better than what you were actually working on. I'm quoting it very badly, but um, the, the fact that you were working for a higher higher purpose, basically, as you've just said, it wasn't just about having a successful project and making money for the two organisations. It was about positive rewards for the region, which is fantastic. And that's something that's core to both your organisations. So again, you've got that common ground. We've got another question. I love the idea of creating a collaboration hub to allow small and northeast companies to pitch for larger deals in an agile way. How do we get this going? Oh, that's a good question. So there's actually um, an interesting um, cooperative, a tech cooperative, um, that are doing that, but on for, for freelancers. And I think there is a lot to be learned. The code. Company co-op co-op cooperative, co -operative, yeah, yeah. And uh, I think there's a lot that small businesses could take from their ethics and how they work, and 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 actually the cooperative model is, I think, the future of the way work should be. So, so for people don't know, this is a Parisian model where there's something like 400 um, digital coders in Paris are all in a network. They're all freelancers, and basically a project comes in. Uh, I'm not sure quite how it works, but they they work as a collective, which I think is particularly post lockdown. I think that's going to be the way forward in terms of as I personally believe we'll see more collaboration, but also more collectives where small companies that might not have survived um, the financial crisis post lockdown will come together and be that kind of two heads are bigger than one thing again. Um, yeah, everyone's saying that's a fantastic idea. So there we go. Dynamo, you need to do a um, shout out to get somebody to build a hub portal, but that's a great idea. It's a great idea. Any other questions? Yes, Catherine's giving us the flag, so I think we're going to wrap up there. Um, thank you very much. Can I just say thank you both to, to my um, panellists? Are you panellists? That was a fantastic conversation, and thank you so much for your honesty. Thank you to Tracy um, Moore from P&A Group and Charlotte Windybank.
and um, we will. I don't know how. I don't know how. I don't know how we stop it, things rolling. So. <laughs> we may have stopped already. I don't know. <laughs> Thank you so much, Lucy. Thank you so much, Thank you so much, Lucy. Thank you You're so much. Awesome. Um, I'm an absolute job. pleasure. Thank you.